So obviously a, a general statement here to start, but I believe that the majority of adults or people um, in today's world are misguided into a false perception of what we call happiness, right? And there's a lot of reasons that go into that. And, and there's, you know, probably now more so than ever, uh, a really complicated aspect of it with the world of digitalization, but to stay on track. I think the majority of this comes from compromise. And I believe it comes from a, an, av an avoidance strategy, for lack of better terms. So what I mean by that is like, we all have big aspirations, goals and dreams and shit when we're young. And then basically we just get fucked and suffocated by the world. The older that we get, the less we feel is, you know, really for us. We, we, we forego, uh, you know, becoming a whatever, right? A, a professional athlete or a lawyer or a doctor. And um, we start to just settle for what's convenient. We, we all only have so much bandwidth emotionally, physically, mentally, and otherwise to that our ambitions kind of become some of the first things that we sever just because we don't want to deal with the the strain or the constraint or the letdown uh, that now may exist within that. I feel like I'm driven by two things and two things only. Curiosity and defiance. And I also believe in a really fundamental principle that we must love what we do in order to become who we are. I had the recognition in my early early 20s that no matter who you are, what you do, or, or whatever your career path is, the vast majority of people are going to spend about 50 to 60% of their time alive as adults uh, working. And this whole shit with like the retirement and the 401k and the, you know, kind of the, the life plans shit that, that we, you know, so many of us kind of adhere to or, or fall into just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so I'm gonna take 40 years, I'm gonna compromise 60% of my life, I'm gonna do some shit that just pays me the most money that I can make in the least amount of time and effort, and then I'm gonna bank on having good health and and you know, fortune and time and luck with when I turn 65, uh, you know, I can go on a fucking cruise or something. It's just always been a really absurd concept to me. You must love what you do in order to become who you are. It applies for me pretty obviously, but it was all really driven before I get to that. It was all really driven by these aspects of curiosity and defiance. And really the defiance piece for me has been central for a long time. Uh, it's probably why I was an asshole for a long time. Uh, very confrontational. Uh, but I just don't really have it in me to compromise on much. And so even though all along the way, you know, over the last 10 or however many years for me, I haven't had like a, a perfect, I, like, I know what I exactly want to do and where I want to be. Um, you know, I have a decent idea, but the majority of it, especially early on, was all driven by what I won't fucking do and I won't have a discussion about it. So that eliminated a lot of things for me and it made filtering much easier. It made my decisions professionally and personally much easier because I didn't have to think through so much. I already knew what I wasn't going to do. So let's get that out the way now. Now I can just hone in on this. That's where the curiosity piece falls in. Curiosity is what builds or develops conviction. As you become more curious, you just start doing more shit. It's not because it's task oriented. It's not because it's being assigned to you. It's just because you're passionate about that. And whether that's the human body or that's cancer research or photography or art or music, I think it's really fundamentally important for us to have something that we can be immersed in, something that we're even obsessive about. You know. My goal all along, and this is jumping back to, um, you know, loving what you do to become who you are. My goal all along was to just continue to figure out how much more I could learn or how much, you know, further I could take something as it related to training the human body, performance and etc. And I feel like because I am now in a position where I'm, I'm dedicating 100% of my time and focus really um, to my life, to, to my family, to my work, to my career path, all of these, you know, great things that we have coming up. Um, 
And so for me, I don't feel like I have necessarily even experienced who I truly am all the way yet, because as more of these things continue to either happen or accumulate, um, you know, or encounter for, for me, for us, um, I, I almost feel like I'm, I become a different person on the other side of a lot of these things. I meet more people. I create more reference. Now I have a better opportunity to, you know, align perspective and, and try to, you know, kind of generate my belief structure and, and values and shit. When we have a curious mind, there's a consistent reward to it. When we have this transactional mind, there's a rise and fall to it. If I think I deserve something or if I need to just get to this point or get this done, I expect some sense of one feeling, but then two compensation or reward for that. The reward makes us feel good, but then we no longer really are getting the same value from it. So it starts to diminish along the way. And then we anticipate this next gimme, gimme, gimme. The curiosity route is more of like a, a fabric that you are continuously just kind of putting together and developing. And it makes for a much more, if nothing else, enriching process. I'll leave it with this. I've been in a position in life now where, you know, people call me and shit and, and, you know, ask for input or whatever. I guess that's why I do things like this now more often. But when I'm speaking with coaches, especially, but this applies to everybody that are asking me for career advice, or they're asking me, you know, like, how did we do the whole entrepreneurial thing? Just figure out what you fucking love to do. And you are comfortable committing that 60 percent of your adult life until you're 65 40 hours a week do what you fucking love and then figure out how that thing can be serviceable or valuable or important or interesting to other people and then be able to make you know money off of it be able to monetize it you can then experience life in fullness you don't have to put your work face on and then put your f family face on or your friend face on. You just are who you are. There's a really raw authenticity to it that um, that I'll say that that part is really cool. Um, you know, I can be who I want to be. I can be who I am in, in any setting and, and, and I can, you know, continue to make my own decisions and have my own discretion. It's a, an incredibly rewarding thing. But to this, you know, career coach advice thing. Figure out what your kind of goal end goal is as it relates to this love, this passion, this curiosity. Don't compromise on it. Be defiant to this corporate ladder structure. Figure out your way to create your own opportunities and keep your external reliance as low as it can be along the way. I think that's probably the most essential strategy, um, you know, as it relates to your career, to your profession, because... We're all going to have to fucking spend time doing something to make money. And you might as well spend that time doing shit that you really love to do.